to break down a trio of title fights. Welcome in the experts, UFC Hall of Famer Rashad Evans and CBS Sports combat analyst Brian Campbell. The underdog, Jan Blachowicz, defends his light heavyweight title against Adesanya as the fight goes the distance. Jan winning via unanimous decision as Adesanya loses for the first time in his MMA career. Rashad, did Adesanya perhaps underestimate Blahovich? What did you see? Well, I don't know if you underestimate him. I know one thing for sure, though. You know, he was not ready for that size advantage. I think that's when maybe one thing that he may have just overlooked of just how heavy Jan would be on top and just his ability just to control the style bender. But also his takedown, his injuries on the takedown were pretty slick. You know, he caught Israel when he was pulling out from a punch and then he, Israel left his tips there and left the easy takedown. Early out, Izzy was having his way and he had, you know, Jan in his trick bag by keeping him in uh, just always in constant, you know, fakes and faint mode and not knowing when he was going to come. And, and that was working out for Israel. But after a while, when he couldn't capitalize off those big shots and those big opportunities from them gaps that he, he, he left open, you know, it was just Jan's for the taking. And Jan did a good job. I think that, you know, I think BC, I think you owe Jan a little bit of apology here. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take this L Rashad and take it well here because let's shout out the champion. Uh, in this case, Jan Blahovic making his first title defense. I had already labeled him before he could even defend it as maybe a future transitional champion. What he did was he acted like a champion. He knew his greatest advantage would possibly be that jab to try to keep the quicker and more elusive guy in front of him. He used that effectively. And then, of course, relying on the wrestling in very key moments in rounds four and five with the fight on the line. You saw a championship gritty veteran performance, very similar to a guy with a similar style who we, or should I say me, Rashad, regularly picks against in that Stipe Miocic. So this was very reminiscent of that type of blue collar performance to get the job done. Adesanya was in this fight. He looked like he had a, had a path of avenue to victory, but when you see a champion make the adjustments, yes, he deserves all of our respect. Does somebody on the show talk about a hot knife through butter? I can't believe it's not butter, okay? Jan Blaho, it's still your champion. Yeah, the, the dude is an underdog all the time, and he delivers. I mean, that's what he is. He, he loves the role of an underdog, even if he doesn't know it, and he just wins. Uh, he says he wants to fight to Sharon next. In terms of, of both Blahovich and Adesanya, BC, what is next for both men? You know, I think that's the name, Glover Teixeira. He's having his own career resurgence We're right around age 40 right now, which is remarkable, as is, again, what Blahovich is doing right now at age 38. That's not a sexy matchup from the standpoint of lighting up pay-per-view buys, but where we are in this division at 205 post John Jones's move up to heavyweight, that's a good fight, a 50-50 fight in a lot of ways, too. So let's give Jan his respect. He wants that fight. We'll get it. Is he? I thought he took this loss well. Look, you can really tell what somebody's made of, how they speak in the interview afterwards, how they understand it. He said the right things. He did dare to be great. He came up short, but he said he's going back to 185 where he's the champion at middleweight. And when you talk about the potential of big time rematches against the likes of a Robert Whitaker or even a Marvin Vittori who's on the rise at the moment, there's going to be a lot of business for Adesanya there. He's still the best of the bunch. He did not get embarrassed. He did not get KO'd. He dared to be great and came up short. He was the smaller man in the end. Shout out to the champion. Yeah, I think it's going to be uh, Jan and, and definitely Glover to share going. And listen, this is a great fight for Jan because, you know, he comes off the fight with Izzy, but then he has a nice, hearty fight against a, uh, Glover to share. And, and, and the guy uh, beating a guy like Glover to share, it means something. But more importantly, it kind of sustains you as a champion. And coming in after John Jones' long reign, you want to show that you are a champion. You want to show that you're just not a one fight uh, guy who can just win one fight and not move on after that. So I look for him to come and just, you know, have a great fight with Glover to share. But with Israel out of sign, you have to worry about, you know, now he's back at 185. Did he leave a chink in the arm for somebody to climb through? You know, I think they're going to be looking at this fight, those guys at 185, and seeing there are some holes that they can exploit, some things that they have may, may have not have seen before with other fights at 185. Now there may be some holes in a path to victory for somebody who didn't see some at 185. 
No one has ever weighed as light as Adesanya did and won the UFC light heavyweight title. Came in at 200 and a half pounds, and uh, he did a little bit of taunting with that pizza box, and it was him that, uh, that, got, uh, that got chewed up and spit out on this night. Um, we had absolute chaos in the first title fight of the night. Petter Jan delivers an illegal knee in round four. Aljamain Sterling wins the Bantamweight Championship via disqualification. First ever UFC Championship by disqualification. Rashad, what's your reaction to what happened? You know, um, it, it was it was a buildup of frustration. You know, I, I'll say this. Peter Jan was doing a great fight, you know, had, had a great fight going, was really finding a way to just muster through a lot of Aljo's just frenetic pace and just, you know, um, just nonstop pressure. But I think the result of that nonstop pressure, that in your face, that weathering through that frustrating craziness that he had to, I think that was a result, you know, just, just not being able to keep it together, mentally speaking, when he had uh, Aljamain in a position and he knew where the position that he had him in and just really wasn't thinking clearly. And that's what happens when frustration starts to creep in. When frustration creep in, you just start to get mad. And when you get mad, it's not a good place in a fight because then you stop thinking. And we just seen Jan had a brain fart right there and was not thinking clearly. Yeah, look, let's make no mistake about it. It's a horrendous error for Jan at such an inopportune time in a fight that was a thriller to watch, and he was the guy peaking, making uh, you know the right decisions and going in the right direction. But with that said... I think UFC has to look closer at what these rules are for championship fights. Not that Jan doesn't deserve the loss there or deserve to lose his title, but to see a title actually change hands in this situation. Look, the one guy who could have benefited from it most was Aljamain Sterling, and he threw the title down to the ground. Now, look, was that a uh, dramatic move for a guy who, let's not forget, was likely concussed from that knee? Probably. But I think that's enough evidence for the UFC to realize that uh, you need harsh rules in place to prevent fighters from looking to take an easy way out. But at the same time, do you really want to reward a fighter with a championship win and the title when even they know they didn't earn it the traditional way? I'd like to see at the very least this fight be a no contest or a loss for the ex-champion. Have him stripped of the belt. We go back to the rematch anyway. But either way, look, it's a bad era for Jan. No excuses. Yeah, the rules are the rules. And they're there, of course, to, to, for the safety of the fighters. Uh, BC, how soon do they run this back? You know, it's certainly dependent upon Aljo making a quick comeback here. Uh, he tried his best to fight through it, which, by the way, you do have to give him the nod there. Again, going down, doubling down, if you will, on the idea that he didn't earn it. He didn't want the belt. I felt like the, this almost happened a couple years back, remember, in that John Jones-Anthony Smith fight. Luckily, that didn't change hands there. Aljo's going to be back from this, though, and now he gets sort of a, a second chance in some ways. This is the fight to run back, even though this division is incredibly deep at the moment. Uh... I think Aljo, if he's fine recovering from this, he's going to get right back in there. Jan's going to want to get his title back. Uh, you saw for four-plus rounds. These two match up very well together. I hope we see it soon. Rashad, what would you want to see Sterling do differently in a rematch? Just calm down a little bit. You know, I thought he had tremendous success at what he was doing. I thought his funk style was going great. You know, by that, I mean he wasn't investing too much energy in one discipline. He would go for the wrestling, then he would go back to punching, then he would go back to kicking. It was a nice frenetic pace, but, some, pace, but sometimes he got a little too excited, and him being a little bit too excited caused him to make some mistakes, caused his feet to not be underneath him. And I think that's really why he really couldn't land on anything with any kind of substantial power with his punches you know sometimes when you work hard you got to make sure you're working for the right area and not overworking and work and just be working and then you have an energy crash what it looks like he did have within the third and fourth round again the first ever UFC championship won via disqualification looking forward to see them run it back Petter Jan and Aljamain Sterling for the Bantamweight title in the co-main event it was automatic Amanda Nunez makes quick work of Megan Anderson winning via first round submission Mystic Shad and Brian Campbell both predicted this outcome. They put money in your pocket. That's what they do. She defends her featherweight title. She's cleaned out both the bantamweight and featherweight division, BC. What is left for Amanda Nunes to accomplish aside from cashing checks from the UFC? 
uh, it, it's wild. You know, this this woman deserves every piece of accolade she deserves that she receives. She deserves it. In fact, we could probably start having that discussion. Can we stop maybe clarifying her as the greatest women's fighter of all time and just say simply she's in the discussion of the greatest fighters of all time, regardless of sex. But you saw the dominance here. There's just not anybody in the two divisions in which she uh, dominates over 135 and 145. That can come close to her on paper. Could Holly Holm work her way back into a rematch for the featherweight title and would we buy it? Well, yeah, maybe because there's no one else. The fight to make is the fight that there always was to make. The fight we've seen it two times already. Valentina Shevchenko, currently the UFC's women's flyweight champion at 125 pounds. She has two losses to Amanda Nunes, both very close. The rematch for the Bantamweight title, a virtual pick em that went down to the scorecards. We want to see that a third time. Valentina needs it for her legacy to some degree. Nunes doesn't need it, but if the UFC can give her the money to make her want it, this is the fight to make. That's the only fighter standing right now. Chris Cyborg's no longer in the UFC who could really have a chance on paper. I'm not saying Amanda needs to rush this, but that's the only thing that can maybe get you excited because the dominance is incredible at this point. Yeah, the dominance is just substantial. It's getting ridiculous, and she's getting better and better every fight. You know, just when you think that she's reached her peak, she does something else to just show you that she's gotten so much better, you know? Her mindset is just growing so much, and with that, all the techniques and everything is just flowing together. But she's having that Mike Tyson effect on her opponents, just beating them before she even has walks into the octagon. And we clearly seen that in this fight. You know, Megan was in there for a little bit and was game, but everybody has a plan until they get hit. And when Megan got hit, you just seen a look in her eyes like, oh, this is why you're the double champ. And, and you know, there, there's going to be no one that can compete with her in either of those weight class. But like BC said, I think that Shevchenko fight is a fight to make. You know, both of these ladies are just completely chewing up their weight classes, both respectively speaking. And I think this is the fight to make. The UFC is known for these blockbuster fights. They're known for getting the fans what they want. And I think this is a fight is definitely in the making because it will be the two pinnacle of both of these women are just so tr uh, tremendous and it would be great to see them both getting there and fight well bc we we can we can have that conversation she is one of the greatest fighters in ufc history male or female 12 fight win streak now one behind kamaru usman for 13 to match the longest active win streak in the ufc i mean that just puts into perspective how dominant how good she has been your biggest takeaway from ufc 259 is what rashad start with you you know, I was really impressed with uh, Islam Makashev. You know, I feel like there was a star born at 155. You know, I felt like at that moment when he won the fight, Habib just like passed the torch and said, you know what, now you can be the leader of my young Padawan. You know, that's what I felt. It was one of those crowning moments for uh, Islam. And I feel like he's going to be a big problem in that 155 lightweight division because the way he just completely chewed up his competition and drew Dober. It, it just looks as if like he's going to be that same style with the beep, but have a couple of different wrinkles that give him maybe a different edge on his feet. So that was my biggest takeaway from the fights. I got to go back to Israel out of Sanya. My biggest takeaway is that it turns out he's human after all, and it's certainly no slant against him. He fought a game battle, as we talked about, but when you consider the success he had in his first three years in the UFC, 9-0, and beating a who's who in middleweight history, dominating everyone, Look, it wasn't hard to pick him over Blahowitz, and it wasn't hard to believe the the Grandois plans that Adesanya had to maybe move up to heavyweight one day, to take down the great John Jones, to become the UFC's first three-division champion. All of that could happen, but it's not going to happen right now, and it turns out that Adesanya is the best middleweight in the world, is one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world. But shout-out to Blahowitz for standing tall. You never quite know what you're going to get in the octagon. There was very much big reason to believe in Adesanya here but in the end he had a very human-like performance when the biggest takeaway for Blahowitz is after the fight he said he wasn't as fast or as strong as I thought he was going to be I think we can maybe echo the same Israel Adesanya undefeated no more Brian Campbell shot Evans breaking down a monster night at UFC 259 with a trio of title fights for more with Brian Campbell and his pal his good buddy Luke Thomas check out morning combat it's a fun time had by all. It, it's this is this is one of the best podcasts out there. Spotlighting the weekend's biggest news from the world of boxing, mixed martial arts. You can watch the series on YouTube. You can also listen to the podcast on Apple and Spotify. Download and subscribe today. 
Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.